Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. I am Ravi and today we will be discussing about serialization in Java. So without wasting much time, let us quickly take a peek on the agenda for today's discussion. Firstly, I'll explain you what exactly serialization in Java is and later we shall understand why we need serialization. Followed by that, we shall understand how is serialization done in Java and later we shall discuss some major advantages and disadvantages related to serialization in Java and then some controversies based on serialization. And finally, we shall wind up the session by understanding the best practices to be followed to use serialization in Java. So I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now without wasting much time, let us quickly get started with our first topic, which is what is serialization? To understand serialization in a much better way, let us consider a simple example where we have two different JVMs at two different locations. Let us assume that JVM1 is executing a particular object and the same object is expected to be executed in JVM2 as well. Now, the only way would be transferring this object from JVM1 to JVM2. To transfer the object from JVM1 to JVM2, we must either follow the process of serialization or we must be using an externalizable interface. Now here, we shall use serialization process. In the process of serialization, the object is converted into a byte stream. And this byte stream is either saved in memory or a database or in form of a file. This byte stream is transferred to the JVM2 and at the JVM2 end, this byte stream will be deserialized and the object is retrieved to the original state and will be executed in JVM2. With this example, we can finally conclude the definition of serialization as follows. Serialization in Java is a process of converting the object code into a byte stream and transfer the object code from one Java virtual machine to another and recreate it using the process of deserialization. Now, with this, let us move on to our next topic, which is why do we need serialization in Java? We need serialization in Java for the following reasons. Firstly, communication. Serialization involves the procedure of object serialization and transmission. This enables multiple computer systems to design, share and execute objects simultaneously. The next reason is persistence. The state of any object can be directly stored by applying serialization onto it and it can be stored in a database so that it can be retrieved later. Note that only the particular state of an object is stored here, not the entire object. Followed by this, the next reason for using serialization will be deep copy. Cloning process is made simple by using serialization. An exact replica of an object is obtained by the process of serializing the object into a byte array and then deserializing it. The next reason will be caching. The time consumed in building an object is more compared to the time required for deserializing it. Hence, we can prove that serialization minimizes the time consumption by caching the giant objects. The final and the most important reason for using serialization is cross JVM synchronization. The major advantage of serialization is that it works across different JVMs that might be running on different architectures or operating systems. With this, let us continue with our next topic, which is how do we serialize an object? A Java object is serializable if and only if its class or its parent class is implementing either of the two libraries, which are java.io.serializable interface or its subinterface, which is java.io.externalizable. In the serialization process, we convert an object state into a byte stream so that it could be transferred from one JVM to the other and revert the byte stream back into the original object. To understand this in a better way, we shall execute an example. In this particular example, we have class persist. The class persist takes care of the process of serialization. In the class persist, we have some details of the employees, which are the employee IDs and the employee names. Now, we have another class called employee, and in this class, we are implementing the library, which is java.io.serializable. And in the last class, which is dpersist, which is none other than the deserialization class, which takes care of the process of deserialization. Now, we shall execute this program and see how does it work. 
As you can see, the program has been successfully executed and the IDs and names of the employees have been displayed here. Now with this, let us get into our next topic, which is based on the advantages and disadvantages related to the serialization process in Java. Firstly, we shall discuss advantages. The first advantage is serialization process is a built-in feature. Hence, it does not require any third-party software to execute serialization. The next advantage is the serialization procedure is proven to be simple and easy to understand. Next, the serialization process is completely universal and developers from different backgrounds are familiar to it. The next advantage is serialization is easy to use and simple to customize. The next advantage is serialized data streams support encryption, compression, authentication, and secure Java computing. And the last important advantage is that there are many critical technologies which are relying in the process of serialization. Now with this, let us move on to the disadvantages of using serialization process in Java. The major disadvantages are as follows. Objects while deserialization becomes completely brittle and they are not sure to be deserialized effectively. The next disadvantage is the declaration of transient variables while serialization creates memory space, but the constructor is not called. This results in the failure of initialization of transient variables resulting in the variation to the standard Java flow. The next disadvantage is the process of serialization is inefficient in terms of memory utilization. The next disadvantage is serialization is not preferable to be used in the application which need concurrent access without the requirement of third party APIs as serialization does not offer any transition control mechanism for every software enterprise. The last disadvantage is serialization procedure fails to offer fine grained control to access objects. With this, let us jump into the practical examples based on serialization in Java. Firstly, we shall execute serialization using interface in Java. In inheritance, we shall deal with case one. In case one, if superclass is serializable, then by default, all its subclasses are also serializable. Now, let us execute an example to understand this in a much better way. As you can see, this particular example is based on case one. In this particular example, we have two different classes, which is class A and class B. Class A is superclass and it is serializable. Hence, its subclass, which is class B, must be also serializable. Now, let us try to execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see, the program has been successfully executed and the output has been displayed, which says that the object has been successfully serialized as well as deserialized, and the deserialized objects are displayed here, which have the values i is equals to 10 and j is equals to 20. Now, let us try to execute the second case of example. The second case says that if the superclass is not implementing the serializable interface, then the objects of the subclass can be manually serialized by implementing the serializable interface in the subclass. Now let us try to execute a program to understand this in a much better way. As you can see, this particular example is based on case two and this particular class is a superclass which is not serializable and this particular class is a subclass which is implementing serializable interface manually. Now let us try to execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see, the program has been successfully executed and the output has been generated here. Now, let us move on to the next case, which is case three. In this case, the serialization of subclass can be prevented by implementing the write object method or read object method in the subclass, and it needs to throw a not serializable exception from these methods. Now, let us try to execute a program to understand this in a much better way. As you can see, this particular example is based on case three and this class is the parent class which is implementing the serializable interface. And in child class, we can see that we have two methods which is write object method and read object method. Now let us try to execute this program and see if it throws an exception or not. As you can see, the program has been successfully executed and the serialization of the objects is being stopped and the program did throw an exception, which is java.io.notserializable exception. 
Now with this let us get into our next topic which is serialization using a static member. Serialization of a static member field is ignored in the process of serialization. Serialization is always related to the object's latest state. Hence only the data associated with the specific instance of a class is serialized but not the static member field. Now let us try to execute an example to understand this in a much better way. This particular example is based on serializing a static member. As you can see I have declared a static integer variable i which stores the value 100 and I'm trying to serialize this particular data member using the process of serialization as my class static serial is implementing the serializable interface. Now let us try to execute this program and see if this particular static member will be serialized or not. As you can see this particular program has been executed successfully and the value of the static member variable is changed from 100 to 99. Now with this let us get into our next topic which is externalizable interface. The externalizable interface in Java is similar to serialization but the only difference is that it is capable to offer customized serialization where you get to decide the objects to be stored in the stream. The externalizable interface is available in the java.io library and it provides two methods which is public void write external method and public void read external methods and both of them throw an exception. The key differences between serialization and externalizable interface are as follows. Firstly, implementation. Externalizable interface expects the user to explicitly mention the objects to be serialized. While in serialization interface, all the objects and variables are serialized in the runtime. The next difference is backward compatibility and control. Externalizable interface supports serialization regardless of the version control. And the only problem is that the user must be responsible while serializing superclass. On the other hand, serialization interface requires the same version of JVMs on both the ends, but it incorporates automatic serialization of all the objects and classes, including the superclass. The next difference is public no arc constructor. The externalizable interface requires no arc constructor to reconstruct the serialized object, while Serialization interface does not require no R constructor. Instead, it uses reflection to reconstruct the serialized object or class. The next difference is process. Serialization process in externalizable interface provides customization to the serialization process, but serialization interface will provide default serialization process. The last difference is methods. Externalizable interface consists of two methods, namely, write external and read external whereas serialization interface does not include any methods. Now let us execute an example based on externalizable interface to understand it in a much better way. This particular example is based on externalizable interface. Now we have two different classes which is the demo class and the test class. Inside the demo class we have a default constructor and inside the test class we are trying to use the process of serialization. Now let us try to execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see the process has been successfully executed and the objects have been serialized as well as deserialized using the externalizable interface. Now let us move on to our next topic which is transient keyword. The transient keyword is a reserved keyword in Java. It is used as a variable modifier at the time of serialization process. Declaring a variable with transient keyword awards the variable from serialization. The next topic for our discussion is serial version UID. Before the process of serialization begins, every serializable class or objects gets associated with a unique identification number provided by the JVM of the host machine. This unique ID is called as serial version UID. This UID is used as an identification by the JVM from the receiving end to confirm that the same object is been deserialized at the receiving end. Now let us move on to the controversies based on serialization process in Java. Oracle's architects intend to remove serialization from Java as they considered it as a horrible mistake of 1997. After a hectic research, the developers at Oracle found out few flaws in the design of serialization procedure which pose a threat to the data. In the year 1997, Mark Reynolds states, We like to call serialization the gift that keeps on giving. The type of gift it keeps on giving is security vulnerabilities. Probably the third of all Java vulnerabilities have involved serialization. It could be over half. It is astonishingly a fecund source of vulnerabilities, not to mention instabilities. 
there are chances that serialization would be removed or replaced in the upcoming updates of Java and on the other hand for a beginner in Java serialization could not be an idealistic option in their projects. With this let us move on to our last topic which is best practices to be followed while using serialization in Java. The best practices are as follows. It is recommended to use Java doc at serial tag for denoting serializable fields. The dots ser extension is preferred to be used for files representing serialized objects. It is not recommended for any static or transient fields to undergo default serialization. Extendable classes should not be serialized unless it is mandatory. Inner classes should be avoided to be involved in serialization. With this we have come to an end of this session. I hope you have understood the basics of serialization in Java, its types and functionalities. If you have any query related to this session, then please feel free to write them in the comment section below and we'll be reverting back to you soon as possible. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!